Hey, welcome back for another online lesson. Um, this is going to be the first of our lessons in our final unit. So we had that little mini assessment for lesson number five. Hopefully that went relatively well. Um, and now we're going on to lesson six, exponential functions and their graphs. So um, this last unit is exponents and logarithms and then we are done. So let's talk about it. First of all, what is an exponential function? So it is a function if it has a number with an x as an exponent. So like 3 to the x, that's an exponential function. 1.06 to the x, that's an exponential function. x to the 4 is not an exponential function, OK? The x has to be the exponent, and that's the only place there can be an x. You can have like x to the x, so that makes no sense. That's not an exponential function. So if it has a number with an x as an exponent, it's an exponential function. Okay, that's pretty much all you got to worry about in terms of is it an exponential function or not. So <clears throat> graphs of exponential functions. Um, these graphs might look similar to some things you see in the news right now with the uh, corona growth and whatnot. It is an exponential situation. Obviously, that's why we're locked down. So let's just talk about it. exponential function and its graph. Um, there are two possibilities. It's either growth or decay. So it either starts very low and goes up very, very quickly and keeps on going up quicker and quicker, or it starts very, very high and then decreases to near zero. Um, so both these graphs have a horizontal asymptote. In this case, it's at zero. Um, the idea is it's growth. If the base is greater than one, it decays. If the base is between zero and one. Um, so like a growth over here could be three to the x. A decay could maybe be two-fifths to the x, something between zero and one. Uh, look at this note down here, negative bases or exponents reverse things. I'm not really going to care about that. Um, not going to add in that kind of tricky type problem. We're always going to be either growth or decay based on the base. If it's positive or if it's uh, more than one, it's growth between zero and one, decay. It'll never really be one because one to the x is just one. Okay, one to the fifth power is one, so that doesn't really go anywhere. So don't worry about that. Okay, so a standard exponential growth or decay formula looks like this. We have three places, technically for variables, the x stays in x. Usually it refers to time, so sometimes you'll see a t there. The capital A is the starting amount of the population, and the R is the rate of change as a decimal. So let's say we are starting with 500, increasing by 2%. So that formula would be 500, 1 plus 2% as a decimal, so move the decimal over twice to the x, or I can just write that as 500, 1.02 to the x. Okay, so that'd be a 2% increase. Uh, if it said decrease, so if I had, let's say, a 1,000 decrease by, let's say, 5%, that would be 1,000, 1 minus 0 0.05, or that's just 1 or sorry, 0 0.95, okay? So you add if it's increasing, you subtract if it's decreasing. So if it's decreasing, that's decay. If it's increasing, that's growth, okay? So given these exponential functions, uh, let's do some stuff with it. Is it growth or decay? Uh, what is the rate? What is f of five? So First of all, for growth versus decay, we look at the base of the exponent. It's 1.02. 1.02 is more than 1, so it is a growth, not a decay situation. Okay. 
And now what is the growth or decay rate? Um, so the rate comes from this 1.02. So if we think about it, 1.02 was one plus some rate. Okay, so if I solve for R, subtract one from both sides, it's 0 0.02, or you can write it as a 2% growth rate. So that's the growth rate rather than decay rate. And then what is F of five? Well, for that, plug in five for X. So I'm gonna do that on my handy dandy calculator. And these will usually just be long decimal type answers. So I get 11.04080803. So let's go with 11.04. Okay. If we were asked to graph it, um, it's relatively simple. First of all, they all have a horizontal asymptote at zero unless it's been shifted. Oops. Second of all, the starting population. Is where we start. So our graph is going to look something like that. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all you got to worry about. So a couple slight variations to our formula. We have something called compound interest. So if you deal with money, interest rates, loans, mortgages, student loans, stuff like that, you'll see interest rates a lot. Uh, this is how that stuff is calculated. So it's similar uh, to the standard form, but it has a couple complications. So in this one, we're gonna use the letters P, R, N, and T. T stands for time. R still stands for the rate of change. P stands for the principal of the loan. Uh, principal just means how much you started with. So if you bought a $15,000 car, your principal is $15,000. Um, and then N, the number of times compounded each T unit of time. So you'll hear words like compounded monthly, compounded quarterly, quarterly, compounded yearly. That just tells you how many times per year. So let's just use a quick example. Let's say I bought a $15,000 car and let's say the uh, let's say it's going to be a decay situation that the value of the car is going to decay so the value starts at 15,000 let's say it decays at 5% um, if that's all the information I have, then 15,000 minusing 5% is 0 0.95 to the T. However, if I add in words like if it's compounded, let's say monthly, then instead of this formula, it modifies into one minus 0 0.05 over 12 to the 12 T. So monthly, there's 12 months in a year. Quarterly, think quarters, there's four quarters in a whole. Um, weekly, 52 weeks in a year. Daily, 365. Um, so you just gotta add in that extra number. And let's just see how this works. Um, if it's only, if it's not compounded at all, so like this first one, 15,000, 0 0.95 to the T. Let's say after one year, the car is worth uh, 14,250. So at one year, 14,250 versus, let's plug it one into the other one. And uh, 
So worth a slightly different amount. So depending on the compounding, um, you'll have some slight differences going on. So um, that's it for the compound interest formula. Let's do a couple examples on that. Um, well, before we jump to that, let's talk about the PERT equation. Uh, PERT, just because, hey, it's like the PERT shampoo, PERT plus. Um, this is if it's something called continuous compounding. So continuous means it's infinitely compounding. Um, it looks like there's four variables here, P, E, R, T. Um, but really E is not a variable. E is a special number on your calculator like pi. So 2.718, blah, blah, blah. Uh, goes on forever. Just use the button on your calculator. On mine, I'm just going to try and show you. It's right there above the LN button. Kind of hard to see because it's fuzzy. But bottom left of the normal graphing calculators, depending on your phone calculator or whatnot, just let me know. I can help you find it. But if uh, so, let's think about that car problem from the last one. If it's continuously compounded, it would be 15,000 e to the negative 0 0.05 t. Um, so p principal rate negative because it's decay, t for time, e is e. So that's all you got to do. If I throw one year into that formula, I get 14,268.44. So it's not a ton different. It's just slightly different formulas based on uh, how often something is compounded. Okay. So just to uh, clarify, E, okay, it's just a number like pi. It's just a number. Uh, sometimes it's called the natural exponential functions, um, the natural number it's sometimes referred to as. So you don't really need to memorize it. Just use the button on your calculator when you see an E. All right, let's look at an example. Um, a total of $12,000 is invested in an annual interest rate of 3%. Find the balance after four years if the interest is compounded quarterly and continuously. So it's going to be a two-part problem. Um, and depending on how it's compounded, changes our formula. The continuous compounding usually is a simpler formula because it's P E to the R T. Um, 0 0.03 came from 3%. Continuous gave us the E, the PERT equation. Okay, principle is 12,000. For quarterly, that's a little trickier one to write and type into your calculator. So principal 1 plus 0 0.03. It's plus because we're investing money. It should go up. Um, quarterly is 4 times per year. So to the 4T. Okay. So those are our formulas. One for quarterly, one for continuously. And we're going to see how much money we have after four years. So I'm going to plug four in for T. So for both these, I'll plug in four. All right. So let me try my calculator. 12,001 plus 0.03 divided by four to the four times four. I get 13. 1523 and 90 cents. So your 12,000 has gone up to $13,523. Let's try the other one. 12,000 to the 0 0.03 times 4. I have $13,529 and 96 cents. So continuous, you should always have more. It's not going to be a ton more. I mean, in this case, it's like you have six extra bucks. So it's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. You should see more with continuous. But if you see a ton more, then something's wrong. Okay. 
So half the battle on these is just knowing which formula to write and which one to use, and then a lot of times just throwing it into the calculator. Uh, one more application type problem is we have something called a half-life formula. So I believe this shows up a lot in science classes, chemistry for sure, that certain radioactive elements have what's called a half-life. This is also how they date really, really old things, uh, carbon dating, stuff like that. So that's how they know how old dinosaurs are because stuff has a half-life. So the half-life is the time it takes for an amount to cut in half. So our decay equation, since it is decaying, a is our initial amount, half because it's a half-life, T stands for time, and then H is the half-life. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, it's just one extra letter. It's T over H instead of just T. Uh, let's look at an example using the half-life. Um, let Y represent the mass of radioactive strontium in grams, whose half-life is 28 years. So Y is going to equal our starting amount, one-half to the T over 28. Okay, I just made my formula. So I uh, should say number one, number two, but it just says number one, number one. Number one, if you start with 10 grams of radioactive strontium, how long will it take to only have five grams left? Well, you can start throwing this into your calculator if you want, but it should be pretty obvious. Starting with 10, you have five, it's been cut in half, therefore it's been one half-life, 28 years. Okay. Number one, well, sorry, second number one, you do have to throw it in your calculator. So if we start with 10 and it's been a thousand years, then this is a calculator question. So uh, can't do this one in your head. 10 times one half to the power of 1000 divided by 28. A very weird number. One point, so I'm doing a little bit of rounding, eight, E negative 10. Remember, anytime you see an E negative on your calculator, that means a tiny, 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 tiny number. That is scientific notation. So that stands for moving the decimal to the left 10 spaces. So let's see what that looks like. So 1.8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So point zero 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 one eight not zero you still have a you still have a tiny little bit left um, because half-life just keeps on cutting in half it doesn't mean that it'll ever hit zero but it's pretty much close enough you can think of it as zero um, but it should be a lot smaller number than you start with because it's decaying so all right that's it for our first lesson in this unit uh, please attempt the problems there's a little bit of graphing use your graphing calculator if you need it um, and definitely ask questions, okay? Um, hop in for office hours. I'll post more information about that shortly, and I'll see you in the next one.